and welcome to my channel. My name is Maddie and I am a PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about finances as a PhD student. Um, it varies a lot from school to school and even program to program and student to student within the programs um, as far as I am aware. So I am going to be giving you kind of what my understanding is as a chemical engineering student at MSU, which is Montana State University in Bozeman. Um, I follow Kaylin Apple, who is the redhead academic on YouTube, and she is a history major. And she goes to school at Yale, and she also has a video about her um, financial situation and like stipend and everything like that. And it's very interesting to watch. So if you're maybe more of a humanities type major, her video might be really helpful, but I still think it's very interesting to look at all the different videos. So first of all, I'm gonna start off by saying that I am a PhD student and I am not fully funded for the duration of my PhD yet. I am writing grant proposals, fellowship proposals, all of those fun things. I wrote one last year that I did not get selected for. I'm hoping to write a couple more this year. I'm in the process of writing one right now. Um, but if I were still a master's student, which I started out in grad school and then a couple months in I decided to switch to PhD, I would be fully funded because it's only a two-year program as opposed to something that's probably going to take me more like five years. So I have funding for now, but I need to be working on securing my own funding to ensure that I'm not a teaching assistant for the duration of my um, graduate career. And so the ways that you get paid at Montana State University, you are either a teaching assistant or you are a research assistant, so a TA or an RA. And as a TA, you obviously are right, um, like grading, grading homeworks, you're helping with teaching, doing stuff like that. And so I, my first semester was a teaching assistant for a freshman level lab for chemical and biological engineering. And that is kind of what helped pay my stipend. And this semester I am a research assistant, so I have more time to be in the lab and I'm taking dissertation credits and everything like that. So that is how the two ways that you can get paid, at least in my program. And so I'm going to start with talking about my first semester and my stipend that I started out with was $1,500 a month, so $1,500. And I also got paid an extra $166, I think, a month. And that was to cover um, health insurance. Like if I needed to elect to pay health insurance through the university, that is what that was meant to pay for. I did not have to pay health insurance because I am still young enough to be on my parents' health insurance and that is the option that I went with. And so total my stipend, like my monthly stipend that I got was, what is that, $1,666 or something like that. However, the nice thing about Montana State University is they do all your taxes for you. And so the amount that actually got deposited into my paycheck, into my bank account every month was uh, $1,452.88. And I mentioned that specifically because Kaylin Apple, the Red Hag academic, the one that I suggested at the beginning of the video, she um, receives a full stipend from Yale and then she, come tax time, has to figure out how much she like owes back in like state and federal taxes and stuff like that. However, the money that I receive into my bank account is already had those taxes taken out, which makes my life a little bit easier. Um, and then looking at the second semester currently right now, I did get a raise. And so my, st my stipend now is $1,776, I think, per month. I don't know what that is going to translate to after uh, taxes are taken out of it because I haven't received a paycheck yet for this semester. Um, so I did get a slight raise, which is awesome, and I'm very thankful for that. And like I said, I'm going to be writing so many proposals in order to hopefully secure more funding so that I can continue as a research assistant as opposed to a teaching assistant. Just because being a teaching assistant, I enjoyed it, but it takes up a lot of time that I would rather spend on my own research, my own homework, my own classes, everything like that. Um, and I also want to mention I don't remember what tuition and fees were last semester. I think they were actually the same for both semesters. So each semester tuition and fees has been $3,578. And that is for nine credits at MSU. And that is getting the in-state tuition rate. 
I am not in the eyes of the university a resident of Montana because my sole purpose for coming to Montana was education even though I've been here for four years four and a half years um, but as a resident uh, not a resident as a research assistant or as a teaching assistant I am able to get that in-state tuition um, rate and so if it weren't in state tuition rate, it would be about, it would be almost $11,000 a semester for nine credits, which I cannot afford. I don't know if any, very many people that could afford that. Um, so just something to also keep in mind. And the tuition rate changes like every year. It's on a upward projection for sure. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and I, had something weird go on last semester where I ended up getting some refunds from the university and I don't know if that was because of the university going online halfway through my last semester as an undergraduate and then they gave us some refunds because of online classes or what it was I really don't know so that was that ended up being enough to pay for my tuition however this semester I did have to pay that um, $3,500 and then I will be receiving my stipends throughout the year and the semester and that will help pay back the tuition price as well as pay my rent, utilities, all of that fun stuff. And so now I just want to give you a basic understanding of the breakdown of those costs for me as someone who lives in Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman is a fairly expensive place to live. It's not like as expensive, I'm sure, as a lot of other places. Like, I know it's cheaper than Boulder, where the University of Colorado is. I think it's a little bit cheaper than Fort Collins, where Colorado State is. And those are the two that I have the most understanding of because a lot of my friends go there and my sister went to CSU and all that. Um, and I'm sure it's cheaper than a lot of places on the East Coast, like New York and all of that kind of stuff. But I live in a house with two other people. So there's three of us that share rent and split rent and everything. And our rent is a total of $1,500 a month. And so that comes down to $500 per person. And so every single month I pay $500 in rent. And then our Wi-Fi and utilities kind of change um, based on how cold it is. And Montana gets cold in the winter. So we do end up using the heat quite a bit, but we don't have it cranked that high. But anyway, um, the Wi-Fi and utilities for the winter months are usually about 50 or so dollars per person. And in the summer, it's more like $30 per person or something like that. It's quite cheap in the summer. I could be totally wrong on those numbers, but I think that's correct. Um, and then for groceries, I do end up spending about $175 per month. Um, which I don't know if that's considered high or low for people spending money on groceries. I really have no sort of gauge for that, but I don't really go out to eat that frequently. Um, so that saves some money on like food and groceries and stuff for the month. So I am also, and I want to point this out and make this very well known, I am very lucky in the fact that I do not carry any debt currently from my undergraduate or anything like that. Uh, my parents were so awesome and they were able to save up money for me and my sister for college and so I was able to come out of my undergraduate with no debt and still actually have money left over for my graduate school and there is still money in that 529 account so that in addition with my stipend I think will mean that I should be able to come out of grad school without debt and if I do come out with debt it'll be very minimal um, however, I did work an extra job over the last summer and I will probably work an extra job again over this summer um, just to get that extra money and that extra spending money and savings and everything boosted up. And then when I think about just other minor type of monthly expenses that I have, I do pay for Spotify premium for students. Um, so that's just about $5 a month. And then I also have money that goes directly into a Roth IRA. And I actually recently increased that to $100 a month. So my monthly, um, what are those called? My monthly expenses total about, I should probably get a calculator. My monthly expenses total about maybe $850 or so, and that's a pretty set amount of expenses that I have. 
Um, and so obviously my stipend is plenty to cover that since my stipend is about $1,600, I'm guessing, once taxes come out. So I, plen I have plenty of money in my stipend then to cover my monthly expenses. And then when I kind of break up my tuition into like four to five payments with the length of the semester, then it kind of actually breaks even. So that is just something to think about. And that is a reason why I am definitely going to look into having a summer job. Um, if I'm in Bozeman, I'll probably work at a restaurant again, like I did last summer. And if I'm not in Bozeman, it'll be because I am either interning at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Kennedy Space Center, Johnson Space Center, or something like that. Um, but that is basically the basics of my financial kind of situation on a month to month basis. I will say that I have been in contact with the graduate school as well as the financial analyst for my department because I've been writing a budget for a NASA proposal and the average stipend within the chemical and biological engineering department is just under $2,000 um, a month. And so I am kind of at the low end of that right now. And I think that's just because I'm so early into my PhD program and I haven't secured that outside funding yet. And they can go as high as about $2,500. And I saw when I was doing my research that for the microbiology and immuno immunology department, um, the average stipend, or not even the average, I think they said that the minimum starting or the minimum stipend for a PhD student in good standing is $2,000 per month. So it definitely depends um, quite greatly on what department you're in, what kind of funding you've received, things like that. I know like NASA tends to give pretty good stipends per month and so does like the NSF, but I'm not sure about other type of funding. And as far as I'm aware in the hard sciences, it's kind of up to you in order to secure your funding. When I started my grad school um, journey, like I didn't sign a contract or anything that said, this is how much I'm going to make each month for X many years, which I know is something that Caitlin Apple did, the redhead academic, when she started out at Yale. She had like this contract that you could kind of like negotiate about, it sounded like, regarding what your stipend was and what type of like work you'd be doing and stuff like that. So it is super duper dependent on where you go to school, what program you're in, and then even what kind of funding you've secured and everything like that. But I hope this maybe helped give a little bit of an idea of maybe what to ask for, what to look for, what kind of financial situation to prepare for going into college or going into grad school so that you can understand if it's something that's feasible for you. Um, I really hope it is. I really would love grad school to become much more accessible. Uh, the good thing I guess about grad school is you're at least getting paid. Even if you're bringing on some sort of debt, uh, you are getting paid. Like this is the most I've ever been paid in my life. Um, so that's, I guess, encouraging. But if you have any specific questions about it, um, definitely let me know down in the comments. Let me know maybe what kind of stipends you're getting at what school and what type of department so that people in the comments can get a better idea of what it looks like at a bunch of different places. Um, but I, like I said, I hope this was helpful. And I think that finances and stipends and salary and everything like that is something that needs to be talked about. And I think they're the taboo surrounding it should definitely be lifted away, especially when we're talking about uh, women being paid less than men, uh, minorities being paid less than white men, things like that. I think we need to be really open and honest about it all so that we can make sure that stuff is not happening. So that wraps it up for today. Um, thank you for watching. And if you wanna see more videos about my PhD journey and everything like that, I do have a grad school playlist which I am trying to post a couple times a month in, um, but my main focus has been my houseplants. <laughs> so with that, I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.